بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سالار خان ہیئر اینڈ ٹو ڈے وی سالو دی لاسٹ اسائنمنٹ اینڈ دیٹ از اسائنمنٹ نمبر 3 So let me tell you that I already had recorded this video once, but uh, it got deleted somewhere. So anyways, we will just record it again. So the question is uh, uh, with the economic load dispatch, it is based on. So what does the question state? The question states that two thermal power stations, one and two serve a load center having a demand of 150 megawatts. So the power demand is 150 megawatts. Uh, the thermal power station 1 is remotely located and is connected to the load center via a long transmission line. So if it's connected via long transmission line, so it would have associated power losses. So the power losses are given by the equation that is PL. So that is equal to 0.0002 P1 squared. Right? Yes. Then the the power plants have the operational cost models the operational cost models are given that is f1 which is equal to 60 plus 8 p1 plus 0.024 p1 squared and f2 this is equal to 120 plus 6 p2 plus 0.04 p2 squared Okay. Next he says calculate the optimal power generated by each plant. So which means that P1 is unknown, P2 is unknown. The incremental cost for optimum operation that is lambda, the total power loss PL and the penalty factor capital PF. So these are the things that are unknown. So let us get going. So what do you have? So the first step is to find the derivatives. To find the derivatives. So you find the derivative df1 with respect to dp1. So this would be equal to what? This would be equal to 8 plus 2 multiplied 0.024 would be 0.048 p1. Right? Yes. Similarly, the derivative of f2 with respect to p2, this would come out to be 6. plus 0.08 p2 isn't it like this it is and similarly the, the derivative of the power loss so dpl with respect to only dp1 and this would come out to be 0.004 p1 of course the power loss is not associated with station 2 so power loss derivative with respect to station 2 would be equal to 0 fine now if you don't have power loss is uh, associated so the the derivative equation is directly equal to the incremental cost that is lambda right yes where is if if you have losses associated so this is equal to lambda into 1 minus the derivative of power loss with respect to that power so over here power is p1 power loss with respect to p1 is this equation so you put 1 minus 0.004 p1 you know where this is from right yes now what do you have uh, what can you do is now you need to find lambda you need to find p1 you need to find p2 so basically if we have power losses we talk about the power requirement and the power requirement would be fulfilled by the p1 and p2 the summation of the two this would be equal to what this has to be equal to the power demand and it also has to cater for the losses so power 1 plus power 2 generated would be equal to the power demand and the power loss right yes so have a look from here we will do the mathematical manipulations and what are those so we would write uh, that power demand value is 150 and power loss value is 0.002 p1 squared have a look right so from here i can write the value of p2 i would write the value of p2 from here that would be 150 plus 0.002 p1 squared minus p1 this is the value of p2 right yes let me name this as equation number a let me name this equation number b so have a look if i put the value of p2 p2 is only in terms of p1 right so i took i i put the value of p2 from here in b so i will get lambda in terms of p1 then i will put lambda over here so this 
equation a would only consist of one variable that is p1 from there i would find out p1 and back putting the entire uh, uh, things would give me all the values back so so what do you have let's say let's say uh, this i put in equation number b so b implies what b b implies that 6 plus 0 0.08 p2 is 150 plus 0 0.0002 p1 squared minus p1 and this is equal to what this is equal to lambda so please do this out i have done this over here for myself so lambda value from here only it would come in terms of p1 so this implies what that lambda is equal to have a look 18 or or have a look 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 5 p1 squared minus 0 0.08 p1 and then plus 18 so this comes out to be the value of lambda now you've got the value of lambda you put this value of lambda over here in a so your a implies what a a implies that you have 8 plus 0 0.048 p1 and this is equal to lambda which is this value 1.6 into 10 to the power negative 5 p1 squared minus 0 0.08 p1 plus 18 multiplied with 1 minus 0 0.0004 p1 do this multiplications i have done this so i will just write it over here directly or if you want me to to go a step wise a little so let us go so the first would be 8 plus 0 0.048 p1 minus 1.65 into 10 to the power negative 5 p1 squared plus 6.4 into 10 to the power negative 9 p1 cube plus 0 0.08 p1 minus 3.2 into 10 to the power negative 5 p1 squared minus 18 plus 7.2 into 10 to the power negative 3 p1 and this is equal to 0. So I have done this multiplication. I have shifted them to the left side all of them. Now add all the, the similar ones. So what do you have is you have uh, first I would let me write the p3. So that would be 6.4 into 10 to the power negative 9 p1 to the power 3. Then minus 4.85 into 10 to the power negative 5 p1 squared. Then a plus 0 0.135 p1 and then a minus 10 and this is equal to 0. So put your calculator in the equation mode. Put the value of A, this B, this C, this D, this. So this would imply what? It will give you three values so out of it choose the value p1 is equal to 76.01 megawatts the other two values would be complex so that is why i have chosen the real value so have a look you've got your p1 76.01 megawatts now have a look to this equation can you not get p2 from here let me name this as c so put the value of p2 in c so c implies that p2 this would be equal to 150 plus 0 0.0002 p1 76.01 squared minus 76.01 implies the value of p2 comes out to be 75.15 megawatts fine yes so have a look you've got the value of p2 You've got P2. Can you not find lambda from here? So B implies what? B implies that lambda is equal to 6 plus 0 0.08 75.15. This implies the value of lambda is equal to 12.01 rupees per megawatt hour or whatever it is. 12.1. You've got lambda power loss so power loss equation is this one you can put over here power loss is equal to what is 0 0.0002 p1 squared 
and this comes out to be 1.15 megawatts. Fine? Yes. Then the penalty factor. So the penalty factor is equal to what? This is equal to 1 upon 1 minus dpl upon dp with respect to which this is so the power loss is with respect to one so the penalty factor is also associated with respect to one so have a look put down the value you have one over one minus 0 0.0004 and p1 uh, it would be what 76.01 so this implies that you've got the value of the penalty factor as well which is 1.03 which is 1.03 so penalty power loss is done, penalty factor is done, and that is it. That is it about it. Right? Yes. Now you can, you know, uh, 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 check it as well. That if you talk about the power requirement, so that is basically P1 plus P2, and that it has to fulfill the power demand and also cater for the loss. So 76.01 plus 75.15. And this would have to equal 150 plus 1.15. So 76 and 75. 70, 70 is 140. 151.16. 151.16. And have a look. 151.15. So the calculations are correct. The calculations are correct. And this is it. This is it. That's assignment number three. So this question is also included in the final term exam paper. This is an important question. And I, I, I will solve the final exam paper in the next video. But I will not go in this sort of a detail in that. Fine. Now let me tell you one mistake that I did over here in the paper while I was myself solving it. So when I reached this step, so I thought that we are not given power loss, we are not given P1, we are not given P2. Now the question that we've solved previously till now, so we were given either of the thing, either we were given lambda, so from that we could find out P2 for instance, we were given P2 so we could find P1 for instance, power loss, one thing was given so the questions were relatively simpler. Over here when I reached, so I thought lambda is not given. P1 is not given, P2 is not given. How can I proceed? So what did I do? What did I do? I I I wrote that assuming a lossless system. <laughs> so I, the power losses are given, and I said that assuming a lossless system, and and I took power loss equal to zero, and based on that I did my calculations. So of course it it then had to be uh, considered wrong. But anyways, so you have to do a little bit of a mathematical manipulations over here. That is it for this video. Now, uh, this one, you know, where did it come from? Do I need to write it or not? That the D power loss, uh, a DP, DF, sorry, the function DF with respect to DP, this would directly equal lambda if lossless system, right? You know this. And this DF, DP would equal lambda into 1 minus D power loss with respect to that DP if losses are involved. So basically you know this, this anyways, anyways, I finished this video over here. I will see you in the next video where we solve the final term paper and that would be it. So till then take care of yourselves, everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers, do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.